Man, can you imagine uh, being able to see the face of the Lord Jesus Christ? That's, uh, that's sometimes more than I can think about. Uh, I look forward to the day uh, to, uh, to see Him face to face. It will be a wonderful, wonderful time. If you have your Bibles with you this morning, I ask you to turn to the book of 1 Kings. 1 Kings chapter 17. And we're going to go... Um, I mean, excuse me, we're going to begin reading in verse 12. <clears throat> First Kings chapter 17, beginning in verse 12. The Bible says in this, and, excuse me, and she said, as the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise, and behold, I'm gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it un and bring it unto me, and after and after that make for thee and for thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste. Neither the cruise of all fail until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did all did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of the oil fail, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. Dear Lord, we thank you and praise you for another opportunity this morning to be in your house. We thank you for your goodness and your watch care. Lord, we thank you for the many blessings that you send our way to this church and for your kindness for meeting with us uh, from time to time. Lord, we pray this morning that you would bless your word to the hearers. Lord, we pray that you would convict those that are outside your will this morning and that you would encourage those that uh, are finding perfect peace with you this morning. And most of all, we pray for the lost, Lord, that you might save them. That this morning might be the very morning that you speak, that you speak life to them. And we pray that in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, we'll be preaching this morning on some things that never fail. Um, and that's hard to concept today for us to uh, get a hold of in the modern day. Because you use something in the modern day and then you throw it away. Uh, when I was a boy, in fact, when I was a little boy, we had a we had a refrigerator that we used probably ten years. That my great uncle, my grandmother's brother, bought in 1928, and it was still running and still going to the 1970s, and was still doing its job. Now I believe, uh, if I'm mistaken, just since we bought our house, we've had three separate refrigerators die and quit using and, and, and what we do just like everybody else we we threw it away and we bought us a new one and that is what we're used to in the modern age and, and so things that never fail is almost contrary to what we understand today but there are still things that originate from god that never fail and if you've experienced redemption, if you've experienced salvation truly, you know without a shadow of a doubt that's something you can depend on that will never, ever, ever fail. And those are, there are a few items in the modern day that are still with us that never fail. Now let me say this, every eternal thing comes from God. Now, things that man create, they're going to fail. Now, you know what? And it may still be up there. I don't know. Uh, some people say Noah's Ark is still on top of Mount Ararat. I don't know about that. But I'll say this. In the direction of God, that ark was made, but, but Noah built it. And you know what? Likely it's gone. It, likely it brought him because it's man-made. It doesn't last forever. Things that originate from God is what lasts forever. And that's why often today in the modern day that people are, are left feeling empty and feeling disillusioned because they're looking for eternal things that come from man and that's an impossibility because we're sentenced to death. 
And so beginning back in verse 12, the Bible says, and she meaning uh, the widow. Now, today, uh, we don't really under, con understand the concept of a true widow because we got our food stamps and our welfare and our social security and all that that maintains the, the, the livelihood in a, of a widow, but in that day, there was no such thing. And you know what? Women really didn't have a job, and so a widow, whenever she was a widow indeed, she had no options. Then on top of all that, here's this horrendous drought, and she really has nothing. Now, if you haven't yet, you'll be in a situation where you have nothing. Now, most of us don't understand that because you know what? Whether you want to understand it or not, believe it or not, we're wealthy people. And if you don't believe that, go outside this country for a little while and you'll find out how rich you are. Uh, and, and so we, uh, we don't really concept that, but at the same time, you know what? It's good what happened because she learned to depend on God and she, the widow, and she said, as the Lord God liveth, I have not a cake. But a, little hand, but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat it and die. Now, I want you to see that this, this woman was disillusioned by her situation. You know what? If you're not real careful, circumstances that you end up in may make you to begin to doubt God. Uh, hardships that come through this life, whether it be monetary or emotional or whatever difficulty might come your way, sometimes you'll begin to doubt the sufficiency of God and, and His ability to provide as He always has. And not just monetary things, because you know what? There, there, there's a lot of saints that died for standing for the faith. And, and many of our Baptist forefathers literally starved to death. Uh, and the, the, the guarantee isn't like that. But in spiritual things, sometimes you begin to doubt. Right. Yeah. And we do too. And every one of us begins to say, well, I, I, I'm not sure about this thing after all. And so the woman had become very disillusioned by her life. And she said, as the Lord God liveth, and God always does, I have not a cake. In other words, she was saying, listen, I'm out of everything. I don't even have a little piece of bread left. You know what? What, th this is the thing that God wants His people to understand. And He's been teaching it since the day of the Exodus. That you trust God day by day. Don't you get too concerned about getting your pension from General Motors. You trust Him day by day. You know, that's why the manna, when they, when they scarfed up too much, why the worms ate it, is because he was saying, you need to trust me day by day. You need to wait for me. And you know what? The hardest thing on this flesh is to wait. And you know what? It's good to look down our noses at the children of Israel. But see, the thing of it is, you could go to our house right now, and it may not be the best, but we probably really have enough food in that house. And it's almost grocery day. We probably have enough food in that house to feed us if we get down to the canned vegetables for a month. But you know what? Don will go to the grocery store probably in two or three days and we'll refill up. Because you know what? We think we need it. But we've not seen need yet. We may, but we haven't seen it yet. And, and, and so this woman was very disillusioned uh, because she did have something. She, she had a small amount and, and, and she had this crazy plan what she was going to do and, and that was to take the handful of meal and, and, and that she was going to kind of get it all together and make one, one little thing and then die. Now I'll say this for you. The only wisdom I see in this little woman initially is she did plan to die. You know what? We live in a day and age today where most don't plan to die. 
Now they, they'll say with you know they, they'll say they do and they think about it 80 years down the road. But listen, they have no real plans to die. Listen to me, from 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 Brother Junior down to AJ. Listen, you plan to die because it's coming. That's right, amen. You plan to die because so that's the, really the only good thing about her plan was because she knew of a certainty that she was going to die. Now, the bad part of this, the, the bad part of it is this, that that God had a very unusual plan for her. Now, what do we like? We like the routine. The every day. I can depend on this going to happen. You, you know what that you know what that does? It undermines your faith. It really does. When you can go A. B, C, and the next day, A, B, C. You know what? All you're really depending on is routine. God has nothing to do with that. And then you'll make the leap and you'll begin to depend on self. And, and, and so what, what was going to happen is that the, the widow's world was going to be shaken up because the prophet Elijah says, you make me some first. You give me the first portion, and you know what? You talk about uh, scripture for first fruit tri tithing, this is it. Because he says, you give it to me first. Now, listen, you can do what you want to to me, but when you come to my babies and grandbabies, you know what? Me and you like to sit down and have a little talk. And if a, you know, if a, if a preacher comes in and all we have left, and there's them babies, and he says, you give it to me first. You know what we say? Well, that's selfish crude. Wouldn't we think of that? If we had to give the, the cup of milk before A.J. got it, and, 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 and that preacher, that slave tongue preacher came in and says, you give me a cup of milk first, and then we'll do something with these babies. You know what? The flesh will rear up and say, you know what? He's nothing but a self-righteous charlatan. But that's what Elijah asked for. And you know what? It took faith to do it. Absolutely. When you're looking at that hungry baby. But you know what? When we, you know, it, it, when it always gets down to the provision of the Lord, seemingly it's always to do with food. Or water. Because you, you remember when Hagar was sent out. This was her plan. She put the boy over by herself so she wouldn't have to watch him die. You know, that, that, that's not much of a plan in depending on God. You know, you know, you know what you need to teach your babies? Get huddled together and start praying. And then let's say, instead of, you know, separating out, let, let, now let's just stand here together and see what God does. That, 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 that's a whole lot better plan. And, and, and so, in her mixed up state of mind, and that baby uh, sitting there being hungry and stuff, she didn't have much of a plan. Verse 13, and Elijah said unto her, very first thing, always remember this, faith grows out of this, fear not, fear not, fear not. When it looks hopeless, it looks helpless, fear not. When it looks like you're out of money, fear not. When it looks like there's nothing left to do with the church, fear not. Because you know what? Fear will cut, cripple your faith. Amen. It will wipe it out of the way. There will be nothing left. So the very first thing he says to the young lady, and Elijah said unto her, Fear not, and do as thou said, she do her plan, but make me therefore a little cake first. Now, I always have that underlined in my Bible, a little cake. Because you know what we like? We like a big cake, right? Uh, I, I, I went yesterday and spent way too much money. Carnival food is one of my favorite things to eat. It's not good for you. It's not healthy. But And I got me a steak sandwich. And I'm not even going to tell y'all what I paid for a steak sandwich and a Coke at, at the carnival down there. Because y'all might oust me. But you know what? I wanted the big one. <laughs> right? I wanted the, the six inch. <laughs> and Elijah was willing for the little cake. You know why? Because it's on the you, you know, 
Don't, don't base the blessings of God on your wants. You know what? If you base the blessing of God on your wants, you're going to come up disappointed every time. Because He's not promised our wants. He's not promised what, what, what little, you know, anything that pops in our mind that we might want, but He says your need. So He was satisfied with a little cake. And bring it unto me, and after make for thee and thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail, until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. Now I want you to notice two things. First of all, uh, he, he makes her a promise that's no doubt difficult to fail. Uh, he says, listen, that, that flower's not going to give out until there's rain upon the earth. Now, historically, and I'm not sure how they get this, they say that it was about another year that they were eating just the very, and, and every day scraping the bottom of the barrel. But the next day they scraped it again. And you know what? She didn't go in there to make her biscuits on, on the next morning and it all be filled up. You know what? It's still with just a little bit of a trace there. And, and you know what? We would easily give up on God in that situation. And I, I, I'll go further with this. Uh, I've always read my children little house books and I do the same thing with Bella. And we just read, finished out the long winter. And, uh, and when times got hot, hard with them, they had two servings of bread a day. But you know what? And this is in Bible times. This is about... 150 years ago, they lived. They made it. And so, when you think about this barrel not moving out, don't think of plenty. Think of what they really had. Just a day by day, probably very small portion. But they lived. They made it. And, and, and so we as the Lord's people, you know what? First of all, even in spiritual things, we need to get used to daily provision. You know what? And, and I still do, and I always will. I hope maybe not to the day I die. I hope I get to live to see it. I've always wanted to see an old world fashioned revival where God came down and He met with His people and He rejuvenated and He saved souls. I've always wanted to see that. But you know, we get so caught up in TV evangelism and seeing what other people People perceive as revival, we forget about to be thankful for those little spiritual blessings that just come boom, boom, on a daily basis. You know what? We might get tired of them. You know what? After a year, I would have gotten sick of bread. And that may be a bold statement, but I know this, you would have too. And, and sometimes uh, we get a little bit discouraged, but I want you to see that it was exactly what they needed to get through this time of difficulty. It's exactly what they needed to make it through. Verse 14, For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail, until the day the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. Now, that seems like a wonderful statement, but he made it through the lips of a prophet. You know, uh, it's easy for a redeemed person to believe that book. But you think about it, what is the only thing that was telling you, the only person that was telling you, this is what God says was me. You know what? And, and I'm just being honest, and you will, you will too. I'll get into that. Because, you, listen, y'all know me. Right? I'm just ordinary Larry. And if I was saying, God said this is not going to fail, you know what? Our faith would begin to waver a little bit. That woman didn't have a whole lot to go on. But yet she believed God. Yet, And he made this statement. He says, by the, by the word of the Lord, but then he told her what the Lord said. You know what? It's a very difficult thing sometimes just to believe that the preaching of the man of God actually comes from God. You know why? Because we, if we don't agree with the message, or if we're not just blown away by it, well, I don't think he even studied. See, that was a very difficult thing. Listen, your, your barrel ain't going to fail. God told me. That's really what he was saying. <laughs> you know what the inclination of the flesh would be? Well, so what? <laughs> I've got that boy to feed. 
And so we as Lord's people, we, we, we need to begin to have a little bit of faith in what our God is able to do. Verse 15. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she, meaning the woman, and he, meaning Elijah, and her house, meaning the boy, did eat many days, and the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of Elijah. So the first thing that never fails is the Lord's provision. Amen. You remember that. Don't forget that the Lord is a provider. That is His natural nature. From the very beginning of His creation of mankind, He made a beautiful garden and He placed them in it and said, there's your provision. After they sinned and it was thrown out of the garden, He had to work like He never worked before. But God didn't fail. All right. Right. And, and, and so we as the Lord's people, we need to understand that our God is a provider and He never... You know what? What a marvelous thing to think our God has never failed. That's one thing that upsets me about Armenian doctrine because if you believe that mess and you believe that you can make a decision, you know what you're really saying is God set out to do something and He never accomplished it. And you know what that is? That's a failure. My God has never failed. And you know what? If He set out to save, if it was in His mind from eternity to save Hillary Clinton, you know one day the Lord's going to save her and change her entirely. Yeah. See, that, that, that is understanding that He can never ever fail. So, uh, this little handicapped scientist that died last week, you know what? He died blaspheming the name of God. And I don't care how long he lived with Luke Aarons. If he believed what he said he did, he was cast alive into the lake of fire. See, God didn't fail, did he? But rather, he accomplished his purpose. And, and so then we as the Lord's people, we need to rejoice this morning, be happy and glad in the very fact that our God has never, ever, ever failed. Go with me just a little further over. Very same prophet just a few days later. <laughs> And you know what? If you think uh, if you think things are going good this morning, uh, look out. And you know what? A lot of times, uh, I don't see God's people much anymore thinking things are going good. But you know what? They're going good this morning. God's on the throne. He's meeting with God's people. He may not be bowling you over. And a lot of times when, when He's not, it's you, not yeah, Him. Right. Yeah. And and so, uh, it may not be what you hope it is, but God's still on the throne this morning. He, he's still doing everything after the counsel of His own will. And you know what? Elijah left the widow's house and she went up to the kings and, and, uh, and to the kings and, and he laid it on the line for them. And two weeks later, we have this. 1 Kings 19 verse 4. But he, meaning Elijah, be, he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat under a juniper tree and, sat to, uh, and requested for himself that he might die and said, It is enough. Now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my fathers. Now, do you, I want to notice a couple of things. First of all, Again, if you're on a high spot this morning, look out. Because trouble's coming. And maybe you're under attack like Elijah was on this occasion. But I want you to see that he made an assessment of himself. Saying, I'm no better than my fathers. Watch your self-assessments. Because you know what? That wasn't true. He was an elect of God. He was a mighty prophet. And he believed the world's opinion about himself before he believed his own. I mean, before he believed God's. You know what? We're going to make mistakes. We're going to mess up. We're going to have times of failure. We're going to have times of difficulty. But if you're saved, what else could be better? 
You know what? The very ones in the, in the New Testament, he said, so, so, so as by fire. And we have so much we think about that. But you know what? This morning, just because I'm a preacher, doesn't mean that I'm not one of those saved so as by fire. And when I get to glory, if I'm a saved so as by fire, you know what I'm going to say? Woo! Blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm saved. Well, what, what could be better? What if I am saved so as by fire? It's better than being lost. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Or to be glad. Or to be happy in that. And so, Elijah's self-assessment was wrong. Watch your self-assessments. You know who you need to let assess you real good and tell you the truth? That's the Holy Ghost. And you leave it in His hand and watch what you think very, very carefully. Say, the, the flip side is true. If you think you're saved just because you did this and that, you better think again. You better think again. Verse 5. And as he, and as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. Now, uh, we're fixing to read about the meal that, that, that the angels prepared for him. But what, what is missed by most people who teach and preach this? He said, arise. In other words, wake up. Get up. Do something. You know what? The very best thing you can do this morning is arise. Wake up. Look at the situation in the way that God would look at the situation. You know what? We're not down and out. You can buy into that mess if you choose to. Choose to, but I'm not going to. You know why? Because if the Lord Jesus Christ in His earthly ministry came out with eleven, what a wonderful blessing we have this morning. Right. What a glorious thing it is. Yeah. And you know what? He had 12, but one of them was a fake. Mm -hmm. You know what? It's not my choice. It's not my place to pick out the fakes. Right. I'll leave that to God. Because you know what? <laughs> if you just read through the book and, and not know how it really is, you know who I picked out as the fake? Peter. Right? Instead, he became the first pastor of First Baptist Jerusalem. See, what, what we think really doesn't matter, does it? Our assessment doesn't really mean a whole lot, does it? You leave, you, you leave that into the hands of a mighty God. And, and, and so, the first thing this morning, if you want to be in the will of God, and you want to enjoy some of these blessings, some of these things that never, ever, ever fail, first thing you do, wake up and look around and be alert to the things that are beside you and, be, and around you. Then, uh, then he says, Arise and eat, verse 6, and he looked, and behold... There was a cake baking on, a, a baking on the coals and a cruise of water at his head. Now, it wasn't chocolate pie. It wasn't pecan. It wasn't ham. It wasn't roast. We're back to a piece of bread, ain't we? We're back to the minimal thing. Things that we think you know what we think about bread? It's ancillary to the meal. You know what that means? It, it, it's just something that complements the meal. But we find in these base provisions of God, it becomes the meal. It, it is the base thing. It, it is what the meal is about. And, and, and so we find here, and it, it was going to be an incredible meal, we'll see, that in man's eyes, it was very, very plain. In man's eyes, it's not something that we would have just dug in and said, Woo-hoo! This is going to be a good. It was routine. It was plain. It was, it was every day. It, 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 in man's idea, it wasn't even a full meal. It, it was missing something. Verse 7. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time. Well, let me, let me throw this in at the end of verse 6. And he, meaning Elijah, did eat and drink. And laid him down again. How many times do you lay down again? 
God gives you something wonderful. God gives you something marvelous. And what do you do? You lay down. You, you know what? You know what needs to be your, your goal? The only time that you lay down is when you're ready to die. The only time that you say, okay, enough is enough, is when He's through with you and not the other way around. When, when, when He... You, you, you know, uh, we preached this last Sunday. I see if you can't remember my lesson. How was Moses when he died? He climbed mountains the day he died, did he not? And it wasn't that he was ready to quit. It was the fact that God was done with him. And that's exactly how we need to be. Is not uh, not seeing when we can quit and give up. And so instead of getting up and getting on the move, because remember the command of the angel was to arise, he flopped back over and went back to sleep. Verse 7, And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat. Again, the very same commandment. Get up. Dude. Arise and eat because the journey is too great for thee. You know what? Uh, the journey does get difficult. You know, you know what the flesh teaches us? That it should be smooth sailing. You, you know why we're so overcome with wealth in our, in our country today? It's because we crave it. You know, uh, you know why? Some houses may not be suitable for you. It becomes a bad you know why it has to be brick? It's because the world says that. You know why double wide ain't good enough? Because the world tells you it's not good enough. Right? The journey is too great for me. You know what? In the flesh, it's too great for me too. Keep going. Dig in. Keep trying. The journey is very, very hard. Uh, I, 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 would be, I would be foolhardy as your leader to tell you anything else. The journey is difficult. But don't give up. The journey's hard. But listen, we have a wondrous and marvelous leader. He's going to take us in the very way that we should go. And you know what? Sometimes it's going to be through the wilderness of sin. That was the, that was the route for the Israelites, was it not? And sometimes it's going to be through the Red Sea. And sometimes it's going to be across the Jordan River. But what we have to continue to do is just simply trust God. Believe that He is able. That is, that is His promise. That is, that is what He has promised us for, to do. Verse 8. And He, meaning Elijah, arose and did, and did eat and drink. He followed us through this time and he went in the strength of that meat 40 days and 40 nights under Oreb, the mount of God. Now, we find something different in the second meal. What is it? Meat. Uh, you know, sometimes you get it and sometimes you don't, right? Now, meat is just a base commodity these days. But you know, when I was a boy, we had meat, meat maybe three times a week. And you know what? We didn't make that about We really didn't. Uh, you didn't get it every time. And you know, because you didn't get it every time, when you did get it, you was excited. My grandmother would have chicken every Sunday. And all week long, we looked forward knowing that Sunday, we was going to get fried chicken. And, you know, that's how it ought to be today. But we don't, you know what? I don't think nothing. I love chicken. I still love fried chicken. But if I wanted some right now, I've got it a block that way. It's too available. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it's, it's too routine. But I want you to see, the Bible says with this one, he went in the strength of that meal for 40 days. He was obedient. He, he went on. So the Lord's provision... He's always there of the spiritual things. They're always, they're always there. 2 Corinthians chapter number 12. 2 Corinthians. Let's 
chapter 12, and we'll begin reading in verse 5. 2 Corinthians 12, 5, Paul writing, Of such a one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but in my infirmities. Now, he promises here, I'm not going to glory, and he kind of gives his credentials in 1 through 4, and Moore says that if I wanted to glory, I could glory. But I'm not going to glory except, and it gets back to this, it's God's provision, it's not yours. If He gives you something, it came from Him. If He gives you a job, it came from Him. Uh, and, and, and so he says, I'm not going to glory in myself. I'm not going to glory in my own ability. And neither should we. we. We should never get so stuck on self that we begin to think that we have ability and, and, and stuff like that. But rather simply depend on God. Verse 6. For though I would desire to glory, underline this one, I shall not be a fool. Now, it's serious business when the Bible begins to talk about a fool. Mm -hmm. So, in other words, if you think you've got this by the tail, you're a fool. If you think it's all about you and you, you can kick back and not worry anymore, you know what? You're a fool. We are just talking about some of the men before we got started. You know what? If you go down here to the bank and want to start a banking account, and you have more than $5,000, they're going to want to know where you got it. You think you're in control? Well, you need to wake up and smell the coffee this morning. You see what I'm saying? So if you think that that pocket full of money is going to do you any good, you are a fool. Because you know what? It don't take... <laughs> It don't take but one click of a computer to make that pocketful of money worthless. Not even, not even worth the pay. You about the equivalent of building a fire with it. That, that that's about about what it would be worth. And so then we, as Lord's people, we need to begin to recognize and understand and know that it is to be dependent upon God. Of that, uh, He said, "I will not glory." <laughs> Verse 6. Uh, say the part of verse 6. For I will say the truth, but now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he that above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth me to be. In other words, you look at me, what you see is what you get. Unless I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations. You know, I often hear Brother Junior say something about not being able to convey what he shows. You know what? Those are your revelations. Enjoy them. I understand wanting to be able to share it because I'm the same way. But you know what? If you don't feel like you do that effectively, just enjoy it. That's your meal for the day. If you, you know, I enjoy sharing food too, but if you're the only one there, God will up. Get it while you can. Because God... God provides those things. He says, I have abundance of revelations. And you know what? He enjoyed them and he, and, and he used them to the best of his ability, but it was his meal. For lest I should be exalted above measures through the abundance of revelation, there was given me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. Now, a lot of people feel like this was his vision and um, could have been. But you know what? You know what's a buffeter? Discouragement. And you know where that comes from? That comes from Satan. Because you know, this is the reality. We have no reason to be discouraged. We have none whatsoever. If you're saved and you know you're going to glory, what are you going to be to bum down? Right. Right. What a glorious thing. You know what? Right. You could be damned for all eternity, but you're not. Yeah. What a glorious, wonderful thing. That's all we need. But see, we want the big things, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> we, uh, we want to be a grand atmosphere. <laughs> be careful with that. 
want the Joel Osteen crowd to be careful with that. Because, see, the, the reality is this. He's on in, in the very simple things. It, 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 if He provides us simple things, do you not believe He's honored in them? I do. He said of His own self, the birds have nests, but the Son of Man have not where to allow His head. Uh, so, do you think this life's about a big house? you think this life is about what you can get? You need your head examined. Well, I'll, I'll say that. I'll, I'll say this. You need your heart examined. <laughs> because it's not. So this morning when you began to count your blessings, and, and I challenge you to do that this morning, um, I, I challenge you to, to uh, look to the God that never fails, the one that had provides and provides and provides again, and rejoice in it. You know what? People that, that deny the security of the believer is this. They believe God does fail. They, they believe that His grace does run out. They would have to to believe what they say they do, right? But you know what? He doesn't. You begin to think of the spiritual blessings He's given you this week alone. And then begin to look at the physical. And you can praise Him all day long just for that. Because that's who He is. 